Hello, and welcome to another case of interesting surgical pathology on our digital slide review and sign out series from the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our case today is that of an 18-year-old woman who has had progressive abdominal pain and is found to have an enlarged ovary. Um, the surgeon takes her to the operating room and laparoscopically uh, sees this enlarged, uh, almost 15 centimeter ovary and manages to fragment it and get it into the laparoscope bag and send it to pathology. Uh, as we receive the tissue, it looks uh, very glistening, uh, very uh, uh, shiny, a lot of uh, uh, sort of fluid spaces pale uh, gray yellow uh, and a few hemorrhagic foci. Uh, notably, uh, uh, there were a few areas like this where the uh, cortex could be uh, seen in, uh, as preserved. So uh, we performed a frozen section um, and uh, of course you have to ask yourself why am I doing this? Um, and in this case it really is helpful to the, to the uh, physician because uh, certainly if this is a neoplastic lesion, uh, particularly if it's any of these uh, sex cord stromal tumors or a borderline tumor, they're gonna need to do staging. Um, and there's no way they can know that uh, before they go in uh, without the help of a frozen section. Obviously, if it's a physiologic lesion, uh, then that may uh, help to assuage them and uh, allow them to uh, finish the uh, case further. Uh, infectious, other disorder disorders uh, less likely in this scenario. Uh, but still would be under consideration. Uh, so uh, here's a representative section of the uh, frozen section slide. And as we can see at low magnification, this is a very pale tissue. Uh, we have some preservation of a slight cortical rim here, uh, but everywhere else we look, we see just very sparse cellularity, um, a little bit of condensation in a few areas like this, uh, maybe with some residual stromal cells, some of which look a little bit luteinized um, and may sometimes explain uh, some of the symptoms these patients can have. Uh, we searched and searched, and on our frozen section, uh, we did not find any uh, physiological structures, uh, normal uh, tissues, normal follicles, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we did see uh, fairly nicely this uh, preserved uh, cortex um, and uh, striking edema separating these uh, tissues. Uh, the other important thing to note, of course, is that vasculature is pre preserved and there's some condensation of this tissue around the vessels. Uh, so our impression on a frozen section was a massively edematous uh, ovary. Um, and of course, we would sample uh, several areas to make sure that we were uh, appropriately getting a view of uh, what the uh, pathologic changes were. So uh, here's the permanent sections uh, from this. It looks less edematous, uh, but we can see here uh, that we do have uh, some uh, follicular structures, a little bit of residual uh, tissue. Uh, again, the cortex looks fine. Um, and I believe we had a few germinal uh, cells here, just trying to see if we can find them. Um, but certainly no evidence of any uh, tubule formation uh, or other uh, features that would suggest that uh, a, a, a stromal tumor or a borderline tumor. Here's a, here's a normal follicle that's uh, slightly dilated here. and We can see the uh, germinal centers around that, or excuse me, the germinal, excuse me, the uh, theca cells uh, surrounding the edge of that with, again, this nice uh, intact uh, stroma. Uh, here's a couple of uh, primary uh, oocytes uh, in the cortex. And so these are spared, and generally uh, with this entity, the edema uh, extends around these structures uh, and engulfs them rather than um, uh, displacing them or creating any sort of a mass effect uh, in that regard. Uh, so here, another follicle structure here. Um, and uh, as we look over here, I think we'll see a few more of these sorts of uh, changes. Um, so this obviously is the tissue that was frozen, the second uh, piece. Uh, we'll look at uh, a regular section 
Uh, here we can see the variabilities and some areas of uh, necrosis uh, associated with this. Uh, and then here may be a, a cystic structure that has uh, become hemorrhagic. So notice here that only part of the tissue shows this massive edema change. Um, and also uh, we can notice here that we begin to have a few uh, uh, what we might think might be uh, partially luteinized cells, a little bit more pale in appearance, uh, and potentially uh, having a more eosinophilic cytoplasm, suggesting the possibility of stromal luteinization, which in this particular entity is an important consideration because these uh, lesions oftentimes will have androgenic uh, or other hormonal uh, impacts, either in the form of virilization or menstrual abnormalities. Um, the necrosis reminds us that uh, in some instances, this entity has been associated with a, a degree of partial torsion. Here's another section from our case here, again, showing this very massive uh, pattern of uh, uh, edematous fluid separating the stromal cells, condensing a little bit around the vessels, um, and uh, sparing the cortical uh, zones uh, to some degree. Uh, so. Uh, with these findings, uh, we made the diagnosis of massive ovarian edema. Uh, this is a lesion that usually presents in young women, although uh, up to 30 years of age has been uh, described. And these lesions can be quite massive um, and the pain very uh, serious. Uh, sometimes it will look like torsion, uh, but as we noted, we had very little of the uh, sort of hemorrhagic necrosis usually seen with, uh, with torsion. Uh, menstrual or other hormonal changes due to uh, uh, luteinized cell changes can be seen and not infrequently we uh, encounter Meig syndrome, in other words, uh, uh, perineal and pleural effusions associated with this lesion. Um, classically, the uh, architecture is preserved with uh, follicles and cortex with surrounding edema and sometimes luteinization. Of note, up to 10% of cases uh, have been uh, reported as being bilateral. So uh, it's not a common lesion, uh, but certainly in a young woman, it's something to be aware of uh, when you encounter a large ovary for frozen section. Uh, so our final sign out diagnosis today is massive edema of the ovary uh, or massive ovarian edema, depending on how you like to structure your uh, acronyms. Um, and with that, uh, we thank you for joining us and hope that uh, you'll uh, uh, subscribe so you'll uh, catch future releases from our channel. Uh, we always welcome your comments either in the uh, space below or uh, directly to uh, us at one of our contact media. And uh, so until next time, thanks for joining us.